thank you, thank yeah. you guys. Thank you, thank Rob. You, Rob. I've got a question again. Um, yeah. I want to get to another question real quick. Uh, Southwest Michigan, you're in the queue. Uh, just unmuted you. You have a question? Oh. Hi. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask um, because um, I'm having a dispute with some friends about um, that a an act of state is the same as an ecclesiastical deed poll or that it gives them the same uh, status. And I was trying to tell them that that's impossible. There can only be there can only be one. So if you could, uh, if you might, could elaborate on that. Well, yeah. I mean, the act of state is uh, the 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 unfortunate thing is. I, again, is we're we're dealing with SESTA-KV trusts, and again, any acts that would be any types of uh, statutory or state decrees, unfortunately, are done at the level of conveyance through uh, the SESTA-KV trusts. So it, it's not the same as an ecclesiastical deed poll. Uh, an act of state, uh, although through the original system of the plenty for tentries, uh, which were the founding fathers, when they set up uh, the the trusts of the states and trusts, uh, didn't have the full apostolic uh, power and ecclesiastical authority that a deed poll issued through one heaven has. Uh, so it's actually it's not the same. Uh, it, it could be similar, but again, is uh, the act of the evidence of the deed poll is to correct a mistake at law, and the mistake at law is the presumption that you're dead. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, because yeah. they were trying to issue an act of state and, and write a promissory note to, to try to pay off uh, their debt, and I was telling them that is not the way you can do it. Well, again, it's the issue is this is uh, uh, there, there hasn't until now been clear, uh, concise information as to how to register uh, proper negotiables because up until now is uh, the formation and the knowledge that these SESTA-KVs exist hasn't been in the knowledge that's been out there. So in other words, is people are still... Uh, and the, the last caller poignantly said it, 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 the system's actually set up to try to trick you back into incompetence. So uh, certainly by doing certain actions, such as trying to register stuff with only equitable title of use of property, uh, you see that you can't actually have the proper legal title of real property until you settle the SESTA-KV trusts. Okay, when you say settle the SESTA-KV trust, uh, does it also mean, uh, you know, sending a ecclesiastical deed poll attached to the birth certificate with the birth certificate uh, back to uh, vital statistics? Uh, well, I've I I did it. Uh, I'm I'm still I'm going through the process. So I'll let you know how it how it turns out. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, again, is it, it is. The thing is, what's vital statistics? Well, it, it's it's basically it's like a keeper of the roles. So uh, notification into the system of vital statistics, for an example, is they have to, by the notice of principal and agent, an agent and principal, they have to up the chain get that deed poll to the proper executors and administrators. And if not, which will probably happen because we're dealing with the story of the scorpion and the frog, uh, so you can actually almost count on their dishonor, is uh, uh, you, you would have the proper, now legitimate rights as a true property holder uh, once you get your membership uh, from one heaven then you now have access to your trustee recipient number, which is evidence from the great register that you now are a holder of real property. So as such, you can now come essentially to the game uh, as, as it is and how it's been set up. All right, okay, from a point of standing, okay, I follow Yes. You. Yes. Great. Thank you, Southwest Michigan. Thank you. If you uh, just a reminder to anyone that's just joined us or, or calling in from um, 
actually so you can ask a question. Uh, if you star eight on your phone, it'll put you in the question uh, queue. We have guest uh, 40 here that's got a question. Could, uh, I just unmuted you. Do you have a question? Yes. Um, this is Donna Jo. If, if, could you explain what a mistake or a ma mistake of fact is? Like if, if a, um, a policeman comes to talk to me and and I and I tell him he's mistaken that he's at the wrong address or or if I or or if I'm supposed to admit that I made a mistake or that I, that I shouldn't have done something or whatever what which what are well, the directions on that? Well, first off, let's let's back up and and say this is uh, <clears throat> one of the uh, let's start with. One of the biggest problems uh, with wanting to get information on how to handle certain situations is the the need uh, or the desire to uh, ask for an instruction on how certain things are handled. Now, this is going to be a bit of a, a long-winded answer to your question, but hopefully it will be an accurate one, is it's it's the actual mode of thinking that uh, if you have an instruction that that can be followed, that the party responding is going to follow the template of the instruction. It turns out that nine-tenths of the time, it always goes completely different. And when people usually uh, uh, take instruction... Uh, they usually fall apart, usually under fear uh, of threat and duress and intimidation. Because at the end of the day, is when when you're sitting there and you're staring at that man in the face who has a gun, uh, we realize that really all he is is a man with a gun. So we have to gain the competence to be dynamic in our responses to such a man. And uh, in one of those things is to, uh, again, is go on to positive law and, and read as much as you can so that you start to get comfortable with knowing who you are. Because think of it this way. Everybody is hanging by their, a hook at the end of their chin, which is 10 feet up, uh, just surviving. And it's something, it's a quote I saw in a, in a book once, and I, I, I think it's amazing, is survival is 10 feet up from hell. And you see, that's just where they've got everybody in their mind so that they can't think of responsive answers. So there is a million scenarios for which someone tries to contract you into the system, such as a police officer, usually definitely quite a way under the fear of threat and, and uh, duress and intimidation because of the gun. But certainly what you can do is, is across the border, we all know that they want a crown name to an account. However, if you have a membership number to One Heaven, which is essentially the trust number, a trustee recipient number, then definitely by identifying yourself as trustee, and for an example, the best way to do that is get the number, but start acting as a responsible trustee. Memorize it right away. For an example, myself, I am trustee recipient number 9831673104031050018. How may I help you today? Now, I have given identification in that matter, identifying me as trustee recipient number 9831673104031050018. Then now the conflict of interest now is on the other party trying to force surety upon you, which again 
is threat, duress, and intimidation, and be and can be treated basically as a a injury to the trust. Uh, do, does that make sense? Thank you. This is Terry, um, and uh, thank you, Donna Joe. Uh, it, 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 the mistake is actually really uh, their mistake effect. Mm-hmm. Um, Correct. They have. They're the ones that have made the mistake or presumption. And uh, like Brian was saying earlier, you know, walking in the different attitude and manner of, uh, you know, treating others with uh, respect and love, so to speak, and uh, to get accomplished what needs to be accomplished. Um, could you? You were just explaining. You just stated something. Trustee recipient. Could you explain to folks what that means, and just a little bit about what the deed pull. We have a couple of new folks on the call. Um, sure. Maybe go through the deed pool a little bit and explain what trustee recipient uh, means. Yeah, sure. Let's start there. Now, is uh, when your parents uh, inadvertently uh, registered into the system, they created uh, you know an identical image and a, a effigy, a you know a golem, whatever you want to call it, uh, and uh, essentially is they they made a slave trade negotiation deal based on the uh the ability to monetize sin o- over a 70 year per- period now uh, the alternative to that system is that two things can't occupy the same space time so by registering uh the uh, the date of birth that you have with one si- one heaven system, it creates a unique space time registry number uh, that's that's an eighteen digit number and uh, it essentially can register for uh, every man, woman, and child, and also all articles. So you have a complete superior registration system. Now, it all works on the capturing of time and space. Uh, I wish I'd I'd love to go into an entire whole hour call uh, based on the occult uh, uh, kind of renditions and how they actually got into uh, stealing of space time and the uh, the direction of of the uh, the the divine compass and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, uh, hopefully that will be another call. Uh, but anyway, it is what's, what's amazing is by having a registration system of where uh, through the lawful covenant, you register and get a live born, which is an authenticated abstract. And uh, we're working on this system so that that can be done actually where you enter the information uh, and be able to do the artwork for uh, communities yourself. Now, what that does is that gives you a unique space-time registry that's a superior registration number over uh, the original DOB. Because again, as we found by research that uh, time was suspended on the Roman Rota, 1908, it's, it's ecclesiastical, it's still in session, uh, so dating a Roman date on things is actually what you do is you create dead. You, you, you gift it to death, in other words. It's, uh, you, you're gifting it actually in the cult side to Saturnus, the father of time, but it's also the, uh, the, uh, the eater of, uh, of worlds. Uh, that's a big long story. But anyway, um, so when you get that registration number, that 18-digit registration number, that's essentially that's the trust, but as as a as a trust holder, as a trustee, you're you are a recipient. So instead of ever using a name in commerce, which is what got everybody into the trouble they're in today, is you now use the name trustee recipient, and then your 18-digit number. Then you use care of and then the address. So by doing that and then sending that through the post, what you're all already doing is you are lawfully registering liens 
in recognition 